I'm Paige. And I'm Megan. And this is Spooky Science Sisters. Hello, Megan here. Welcome to our first official Spooky Science Sisters bonus episode. I am joined today by friend of the podcast and paranormal storyteller extraordinaire Tyson Kemp to talk about his recent experience ghost hunting on Blennerhasset Island. So Tyson has been a guest on the podcast twice before, and so I'm guessing that most people listening to this are already familiar, but if you could take a minute to remind people who you are and anything else, that would be great. (laughs) (laughs) Hello, um, I am Tyson Kemp. You can find me on Instagram and TikTok at Tyson Unkempt. I am a weird history enthusiast and a horror storyteller slash writer. So That's the gist of what I do. And yeah. (laughs) And you're sort of working on a few different projects right now? Yes, I have definitely been slacking this year. But um, yeah, I am trying to get a YouTube channel started where I will essentially do horror stories like I already have been doing on TikTok, but in a much longer format. And then I also am playing around with the idea of a book I'm outlining. I'm doing all of that. And a lot of it was actually inspired by this trip. So that's fun. Yeah, I can see how this trip and like the details of the history and stuff would fit with stories that I've heard you tell before. (laughs) Yes, history with a spooky twist. (laughs) This one like screamed Tyson would be into this. (laughs) Awesome. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of history of the island and, you know, some stories of why people think it's haunted. Mm -hmm. And then I just have some questions for Tyson about his ghost hunting experience there because he just did like an overnight camping ghost hunt where they had like full access right to the house and to the island and everything. Yeah, for the first half of the night, we were welcome to go in and out of the mansion. And then after midnight, the entire island was opened up to us. Awesome. So that was a lot of fun. Yeah. (laughs) Yes. And we will, I guess, when we sort of get to question section give a chance to like say who did the tour through and all the details there so that if other people want to go, they can, which includes me because I want to (laughs) go. You would have a blast. (laughs) Okay. So uh, Blennerhasset Island located in the Ohio River in Parkersburg, West Virginia. So it's like, it's just between the two states, right? Because it's the border of Ohio and West Virginia. Yeah. Right between Parkersburg and then Belpre, Ohio. Okay. And the mansion and the property that it's on the island are part of a historical state park. And I think that wasn't established until like quite a bit later, until like the 1970s, if not later. Yeah. And even the mansion itself, like the whole thing really didn't become regarded as very historically significant until like the past 40, 50 years. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. We're gonna, (laughs) we're gonna (laughs) talk about (laughs) why I think that is silly that people think that it's haunted. (laughs) Okay. So the island was settled, I guess. And when I say settled, I mean like by white people because Native Americans were there for a long time beforehand, as these things often go, but by Harmon and Margaret Blennerhassett in 1798. And they had apparently left behind a 7,000-acre estate in Ireland because of social and political persecution back home, which is a nice way of saying (laughs) that Harmon was Margaret's uncle. (laughs) Yes, very House of the Dragon. Yeah, their family (laughs) did not like it. (laughs) <laughs> then they got married, uh, which I understand because that yeah. is gross. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So, yes, yeah, so there's a little bit of a House of the Dragon tie-in, like Tyson <laughs> said, <laughs> surprisingly. <laughs> so, anyway, <laughs> I guess things went well once they came to the United States, because they were able to build a beautiful 16-room mansion that was completed in 1800. And it sounds like they lived like sort of a lavish 
party life for a few years. A bunch of fancy people oh, yeah. came there. And things went downhill when Aaron Burr came calling in 1805. So like, oh, cool. There's also a Hamilton tie-in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All my favorite pop culture things. So Burr was on the run after assassinating Alexander Hamilton the previous July. So that happened in 1804. And he and Harmon knew each other, I guess, from a previous party. And Harmon decided to help him out and offered him the house, the island, and I think money as well to use as a base for Burr's plot that he had come up with to just like make his own country in Mexico. They had a (laughs) whole militia thing going on that island. It was crazy. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So Burr's like, well, forget this. Like I'm wanted for murder and my political career is now over. So I'm just going to go start my own country. (laughs) (laughs) See you later, guys. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to try and do that in like Mexico, Louisiana and like the American Southwest. Okay, so we all know that that obviously fails. Yes. <laughs> and after it failed, both Harmon and Burr had to go on the run because of treason charges. Mm-hmm. The island gets raided by militia at the end of 1806. Harmon gets arrested, and he and Margaret, I think at that point, never return to the island. So they're not there super long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they they pretty much they showed up, peacocked, and then went out with a bang. Um, <laughs> it was very much a blip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Burr ends up being acquitted, which like I read the reason was like they just like didn't – it wasn't clear that it was treason. And I was like, um, I'm pretty sure going to start your own country elsewhere like counts as treason. But okay. (laughs) But Harmon gets set free after that, but he and Margaret had lost everything. They move back to England. They might have bounced around a little bit, but Harmon dies in 1831. Margaret comes back to New York. She's destitute and dies in a poorhouse in 1842. So it didn't go great. Yeah. Much like I suspect House of the Dragon is about to not go great as well. <laughs> <laughs> For- yeah, I, I have a feeling that something bad's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So as for the island, the house gets destroyed by fire in 1811. And I guess Margaret was like sort of a, a I don't know how I want to say it, accomplished woman like she was she was reported to be like i think she was very beautiful and they said she was tall and she was well spoken and apparently also well written because she wrote a lot of poetry and a lot of it featured her talking about missing the island she's also um regarded to be west virginia's first published poet before west virginia became west virginia so that's fun little fact about her as well yeah which is like pretty amazing because you know it's a woman (laughs) yeah (laughs) it was their first published poet yes so she loved the island so much though even though she was she died in new york her body was eventually brought back to the island to be buried there several or at least a couple of her children are buried there as well although to add like insult to injury in Margaret's sort of sad story, apparently she died like within a few months, if not a few weeks after successfully petitioning the U.S. government to compensate her for the seizure and destruction of Blennerhazzett Mansion and Island. Yeah, what happened to Margaret after Harmon fled, he pretty much left Margaret on the island with the children. And the um, United States military troops, militia, whatever that showed up, they were horrible. They locked Margaret and her children in the upstairs for days on end. And they were, yeah, drunk, um, shooting holes through the ceiling. Our tour guide told us a story about Margaret holding one of her children sitting on this wooden bench while she was locked upstairs. And one of the guys shot up into that room and the bullet actually went through the bench right beside of where they were sitting. So 
yeah, even though like they showed up to like save the day, they were still very much the villains in her story. Yeah. Well, and like no one is surprised that a man who marries his niece is like a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> leaves them behind he wasn't really the the brightest guy either he was so irresponsible with his money he was easily swindled by aaron burr it was just sort of like what happens when you kind of give somebody like that a lot of money like it's not going to end well it's almost like winning the lottery and then frivolous spending until you're penniless (laughs) yeah so anyway fuck that guy um (laughs) i feel bad for margaret (laughs) yeah i do in this story So I mentioned that the house was destroyed by fire in 1811, but then I'm sure everyone is thinking like, wow, but on, you know, I can look at pictures of this beautiful mansion that like looks like an old fashioned one. So turns out that the foundations of the original house were uncovered in 1973. So a solid 173 years later. And uh, what stands there now is a replica of the original mansion that was rebuilt. So I guess the ghosts were just like camping before then. Pretty much. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so a fun fact about the house. Um, so that island actually floods a lot. If you go into their gift shop, they actually sell prints of aerial shots of the island flooded. So the replica mansion that stands today, it is actually a story above where the original mansion was. Oh. Yeah, they had to raise the uh, the ground itself. So when you're standing on the first floor today, that was actually the second floor back then. Gotcha. Okay. Well, yes. All this to say that it makes me like <laughs> an order of magnitude more skeptical about this whole haunting thing. Because it's like... <laughs> <laughs> she didn't die on the island, first of all. Like, her body is, just was brought there. And, like, also, it's not the original house. So, I don't know about that. <laughs> Another fun fact about the island is that other structures on the island are not from the island or even replicas. This island has become almost a safe haven for smaller historic residences throughout the area so the maintenance man that lives on the island full-time all by himself great idea for a story by the way Um, yeah really he he lives in a whole house that was literally picked up and shipped onto the island and then it was like fixed up inside the outside very much looks historic but the inside is modern and i thought that was cool and then they also did the same thing for another house that was located in Belbury, just across the river from Parkersburg. Okay. And then a fun little tie-in to like my personal life. One of the houses on the island uh, were from my hometown. So that's oh, really cool, too. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, that guy's like living the dream. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I would love that. Yeah, as he just there like during the summer when because I I assume they don't do tours like because they have to get over there with the ferry, right? So right. Um. I would assume that he's there the whole time, honestly, because they do have horses that live on the island. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't know <laughs> his I don't know his fiscal year, but he is <laughs> <laughs> when he's there, he's there. Why don't you know everything about this person? <laughs> I was only there for like 12 hours. <laughs> yeah, but this guy is the main character of that island now. <laughs> He's also the inspiration for the main character of my story, but shh. Yay! Even yeah. though I didn't meet the guy, I just think the concept is really cool. <laughs> yeah, I guess now I have to go back and like try to find him. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine he's grumpy about people being there all night. <laughs> Regardless of who he is, he does a great job because that island is picturesque like in a way that it felt like a movie set. Yeah. I mean, it, it is gorgeous. Yeah. Well, they probably do... Yeah, they probably use it to film period piece stuff, don't you think? Um, if they have, I don't know. Usually when film crews come through this area, it's a big freaking deal because nobody cares about this area. <laughs> um, the la- <laughs> the last time we had a film crew in this area, they there used to be a doll factory located in Belbury. And oh, it just, God. Yeah. <laughs> this is like Paige's perfect yeah. <laughs> haunted location. And it's just as creepy as it sounds. <laughs> But a a movie, it was like some indie movie 
filmed in Belpre and you, they used the doll factory as a backdrop. And like that was huge. People like went ape shit over that. Okay. And even though the movie got like no attention or anything, it was just really cool that somebody noticed us essentially. Yeah. And then like the, I think the last time that a film crew was in the area was all the way back in like 2001, 2002, I think, when they were gotcha. actually in Point Pleasant filming the Mothman prophecies. Oh, okay. Well, I still want to see the silence someday. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah. So the house is not original. Margaret's body was moved. Great. So that brings us to paranormal claims that have been made about the island being haunted and the house being haunted. Mm -hmm. So obviously people say that they see Margaret walking around the island or like I think in the mansion as well. From what I heard during my time on the island, it was mostly um, witnessing Margaret around the grounds where her flower garden would have been. Oh, yeah, so she kind of lingers around the house, but I didn't hear a lot about her in the house. Gotcha. Okay. As far as spirits go, apparently Harmon Blinner has it, and their youngest daughter that died in the house, also named Margaret, those are the two most active spirits in the mansion. Okay, I don't even think I saw Harmon mentioned. Yeah, so that was the second one that I was going to bring up. But everything that I read said that they had a daughter die in infancy. But then people claim that they see a ghost who's like four or five years old. So I was like, well, apparently you can like age up in the afterlife. <laughs> um, I believe they said she was two. Okay. Yeah. So she was old enough to kind of get around, but to, she like, wasn't. To toddle around. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like everything I saw like talked about, yeah, seeing like a ghost that was like, a young girl, but like four to five years old and capable of talking to other children who visit the island. So, yeah, that was something that our tour guide pointed out that, um, so the historic tour guides on the island, not like the spooky tour guides that come to the island, um, <laughs> often schools will do field trips there. Um, uh -huh. I did when I was a kid, every school in this area does. But often kids will look in one of the rooms and all of the individual rooms are actually chained off because there are historic artifacts inside of those rooms. Yeah. And they'll say something like, you know, you can look in that room, but you can't go into it. And I guess a lot of kids had, have said things to the extent of, well, why is she allowed in there? Oh. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. And I, I don't know the exact number, but... They said, like, more often than not, when kids are in the tour group, they expect somebody to reference the little girl in this one room specifically, which would have been her nursery back when the mansion was a story lower. Gotcha. Okay. Well, after learning that, like, one-fifth of kids have, like, auditory hallucinations and hear people that aren't there, it would not be surprised me, surprise me if they also saw people that weren't there, so I don't believe them. <laughs> <laughs> But I did have a spooky encounter in that vicinity, so we'll come back to that. Yes. But yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. I'm a, I have to be the skeptic, Tyson. <laughs> oh, I mean, I'm a skeptic, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'd be lying if I say I didn't almost pee my pants that night. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I know. That's why it's so exciting. <laughs> uh, okay. Another interview that I read with a tour guide claimed that there are also, quote, hundreds and hundreds of other graves on the property, specifically of Native Americans of the Delaware Nation who used the island a long time before the Blennerhassets arrived, which I'm always skeptical because it's like, all right, we're not going to do the, like, Native American burial ground thing. <laughs> like, that's just a little, I don't know, old-fashioned when it comes to... uh why ghosts are there and stuff. But I don't know if you heard anything about that. But people claim to see like Native Americans walking through the woods and stuff on the property. Yeah, so we did hear a bit about that. Um, mm -hmm. Most notably, uh, the leader of the Delaware Nation at the time, his name was Nima Colon. Mm -hmm. um, I'm probably not pronouncing that right. But they never found his body. Ooh. But he did have a log cabin on the island prior to the Blennerhassett's arrival. And it's believed there's a marker that designates the spot where they believe that he was buried but official remains have never been found um they've tried using scientific stuff to like search the soil but they haven't found any remains 
But something that they did tell us was that at the tip of the island, they have found the remains of people of the Delaware Nation, which happened to be right next to the area that we were camping. Okay, so this is actually an example of like, there are actually Native Americans. Yeah, yeah, there, okay. there, there actually are. Yes. Yes, I'm always skeptical because it's like, I, I swear, like half the haunted places that you read are like, oh, it was a Native American burial ground mm-hmm. too. And it's like, was it really though? <laughs> and to, to this day, um, every time the island floods, quote unquote, every time, I, I imagine it's just like, it's a frequent thing. But when the island floods, artifacts are brought up and are washed ashore, um, such as fragments of pottery, knives, arrowheads, things like that. That's really cool. Yeah. And there is a Blennerhassett mansion um, in downtown Parkersburg, and they do have all of these artifacts on display. Gotcha. There's also like a Blennerhassett hotel. Yes. That's also rumored to be haunted, but it's yeah. not really connected to the island's history. I think they just sort of used the name recognition. They took the name, but the, okay, but the family wasn't yeah. associated with I wondered about that. Okay. So potentially native american ghosts potentially margaret harman and a daughter of theirs is there anybody that i missed let's see harman margaret little margaret the indigenous people oh and the what they call the watchers oh no (laughs) (laughs) it's so (laughs) ominous i love it (laughs) But the Watchers are um, kind of your classic shadow person entity, and there's multiple of them. And they just sort of hang out in the trees along the island and will peek out and kind of jump in between the trees and just watch you. (laughs) (laughs) Our tour guide, uh, she had said that she had witnessed one of these Watchers, and in her words, they were or this specific one was about eight feet tall and she was watching it move from tree to tree. And she said that she's usually pretty brave, but when she saw that, that was the first time during her investigations that she felt genuinely afraid. Oh. Yeah. Spooky. (laughs) (laughs) But right off the bat, um, as much as I love the idea of the Watchers, Uh I really, unless you have visited the island, I can't really explain this in a way that you can fully visualize, but this island has immaculately kept trees and they're almost entirely black walnut trees. And the way that the the tree canopy and the sunlight works when you're walking past these trees, I mean, even I like was like double taking because I thought I would see something, but really it was just, it was light and shadow play. So that's where I think the watchers come from. Yeah. Yeah. But I totally get why people would think that because I did too. Yeah. I mean, even the groundskeeper or security, I'm not sure which one, they even play up on this and intentionally try to scare people um, (laughs) because there are, well, there is a huge pitch black wooden cutout of Bigfoot in the most (laughs) random spot on the (laughs) island. And when I tell you that I almost shat my pants i almost shat my pants when i like i bigfoot was the last thing i was expecting to see on this island (laughs) like i was looking for some like colonial era like ghosty girl and then it's like nope cryptid right in your face (laughs) in the morning i actually did like as i was getting ready to get on the ferry i was like do you know who did that and he's like yeah and i was like yeah they're they're a prick (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> you gotta have some fun. It's probably just all the caretaker fucking with people. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> honestly, I want to give a shout out to the the people that were working on the island that night, like the security guards. They were so much fun. They were so friendly. Oh, I love them. Good. But they also, what's really cool is um, the show Ghost Hunters was on the island at one point, And one of the security guards that was featured in one of the episodes was actually on the island that night. So we got to hear a little bit about that, which was pretty cool. That's super cool. I was trying to figure out when they were there because I thought it was sort of recent. Oh, it looks like it aired in 2022. So it was like just a year ago that they would have been there. That's awesome. (laughs) I haven't watched that show in years. It's worth it. Well, now it's like the rebooted one without Grant. It's um, 
Jason Hawes and like some of the original people, but some a couple new people. Oh. Ghost Hunters drama. Cause it used to be him and Grant. And then they sort of like had a falling out, I think. And the show ended. And then it came back with Grant as like the lead, but Jason wasn't there. And then it got that went away. And then it came back again with Jason, but not Grant. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Like that yeah. requires a deep dive in itself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Drama. Okay. So, yeah. So I think that covers the ghosts. So now I just have some questions for you about your experience, which like we've already kind of started talking about, but yeah, we'll just jump in. <laughs> so, first, I guess sort of like in one place, we've sort of talked about some of it already, but tell us about the tour that you attended, like who did you book it through? What was provided to you guys in terms of equipment that you could use? You already said what you had access to in terms of the house and the island, um, but also like what did you bring with you? So the company that organized this, they are called Hidden Marietta. They are fantastic, super friendly, super organized and professional. I was very, very impressed. The second that we showed up to get on the ferry, they were telling us about the island and making us sign a waiver saying that we're not going to try to swim in the river and we won't sue if we get attacked by a coyote. And then they also gave us a brochure that had a detailed map of the island itself, its trails. And then they had like little icons where people had reported ghostly um, encounters. So that was really cool too. So you could like sort of have a general idea of where to go. It was just really great. There was an itinerary on the brochure. We knew exactly where to be and where to go. As soon as we got to the island, they told us like this plot of land right here, like you can set up your tents here, which by the way, if you do plan to go, um, you have to bring your own tent. You have to bring your own food and water. That stuff is not going to be provided to you. But what is provided to you is um, they have um, electricity and bathrooms with plumbing. It's not like an outhouse or anything. Yeah. So um, you have a bathroom and you have an outlet, but everything else is on you. And yeah. then, yeah, after we got set up, we got to go on a horse drawn wagon tour of the island, which was really, really cool. <laughs> <laughs> and then when that was finished, then we got to set up our tents, have our dinner, and then at I think it was like 7.30, 8 o'clock, we were given a tour of the mansion and the goings-on inside. And then from 8 to midnight, the mansion was open to us. But from 8 throughout the whole night, the whole island was open to us. We didn't have to be in a certain place at a certain time. How Uh you wanted to investigate was up to you. And I thought that was really great. And at any moment, you could borrow some equipment from Hidden Marietta. They provided things like EMF readers um spirit boxes rem pods dowsing rods pendulums it was great like i got to i played around with all of it and i think the most fun quote unquote fun that i had was with a spirit box yeah (laughs) (laughs) yeah that just sounds like an absolute dream (laughs) to go on this tour oh yeah an adult like summer camp it was great uh, yeah, like spooky summer. <laughs> oh, I want to go. Um, <laughs> and we are going to come back to Tyson's experience with the spirit box because that's like, that was like my number one priority in recording this because I think it's so cool. Um, <laughs> but we'll see, <laughs> which is probably something that listeners are like, Megan thinks that the spirit box is really cool. What is happening? But <laughs> <laughs> going into this, And I'm like shocked that I haven't asked you this just in passing before. But did you have (laughs) any like paranormal investigation experience before this? Um, Yes. So long story short, very long story short, um, (laughs) I I became super interested in ghosts and the paranormal when I was a child because I was convinced that I lived in a haunted house. Yeah. And to make another... Well, that was your third time you were on the podcast because we read your story for Halloween Stories one year. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> I forgot about that. The viewers. Yeah. Stories. Year two of Halloween listener stories. You were yeah. on there. <laughs> so um, long story short, after some years of reflection, I realized that I wasn't experiencing some kind of paranormal thing. What I was really experiencing was sleep paralysis and a general fear of the dark. Mm-hmm. So 
I was still very interested in spirits, even if my belief in them had dropped off. So I live in an area that is not really known on like a national level of being historically significant, but there is a lot of history here. And with history comes ghost stories. Mm -hmm. So there are haunted train tunnels, there are haunted tuberculosis wards from back in the day, there are haunted asylums from back in the day. Um, haunted hotels, haunted everything. <laughs> like for real. Um, yeah. hidden Marietta, it, they cover it all. They're great about that. But the extent of my ghost hunting was mostly things that I had easy access to as a teenager. Um, I couldn't just drop $50 on a ghost tour. Yeah. Or to right. like, yeah. So I would go to these, um, haunted train tunnels. I would go illegally into the abandoned tuberculosis ward in Athens, Ohio, um, <laughs> which has since demolished. It was full of asbestos and lead paint. Yeah, Don't say. go in there. Well, you can't, <laughs> but I should not have gone in there. Um, <laughs> the old um, insane asylum in Athens, uh, I had been in there, but don't go in there because Ohio University purchased it. It is now uh, office space for faculty members. You will be arrested. But yeah, just generally going to places that had a haunted reputation and taking a bunch of pictures, doing some audio recordings, playing with my Ouija board. Yeah, that was the extent of my ghost hunting experience. It was not very structured, not very, yeah, not very structured, but it was a lot of fun. Gotcha. Yeah. So nothing like in an official capacity. <laughs> yeah. Like I didn't have like the extent of my equipment was like a digital camera, a tape recorder and a flashlight and a yeah. Ouija board. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, knowing you as internet friends, <laughs> <laughs> I sort of expect what your answer to this will be. But I was going to ask, as a skeptic, like, what were you expecting going into this experience? And what I think you're going to say is, like, that you were keeping a very open mind about it. But I'm interested to see if you had any, like, preconceived notions. So, I actually did have sort of a preconceived notion about this place. When I was a kid, I went on a field trip to the island and I had a little disposable camera and I was taking pictures in the mansion and I captured very weird like mists and silhouettes in my pictures. Oh. So, which could have been double exposure for all I know, or I don't know photography terms, but. <laughs> I mean, this was like old enough that like you were taking it on like a, dis you, you said disposable camera? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was like maybe third grade, maybe fourth. Yeah. 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 So like <laughs> I, I took these pictures and then I, I took them to. I think it was CVS or something. And I was yeah. like, develop these. They developed them. And <laughs> I was horrified. And <laughs> I think I cannot find the pictures. I think this was in like the height of my, oh my God, my house is haunted phase. And I think yeah. I might have actually destroyed the pictures because I was afraid of them. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Which makes me so mad now because yeah, I wish right. I had them. You'd love to have them now. <laughs> I know. But so going into this, even though I am a skeptic, I was like, you know, the island itself is like stepping back in time. I was open minded, um, even as a skeptic. I wanted to experience something. So I even tried to exacerbate it by sneaking a Ouija board in my backpack. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Did they say no Ouija? <laughs> they did not, but I can't imagine they would have been enthused about it. Um, and I was, everybody else on this island, they were in groups of like, Two, three, four. There was a group of like seven or eight people too. I was like the only local and the only person that was a party of one. So yeah. I was just walking around this island, live streaming on TikTok with nothing more than a headlamp and a lantern and my Ouija board. Yeah. And spoiler, I never got anything on the Ouija board. But <laughs> for aesthetic purposes so on shocked. the live stream, <laughs> it was great. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that I did forget to mention that in like the lead up. Yeah, Tyson was by himself. So like that is bravery right there. <laughs> A, because like, even if I thought like that I might meet other people or make friends on it, I just, that alone would be enough to scare me away from doing it myself. <laughs> this was also kind of like a me conquering a fear kind of thing. Okay. Um, because the island is pitch black. If yeah. you're not around the mansion or the bathroom, facility it is pitch black at night yeah 
you can hardly even see like which West Virginia and Ohio, depending on which side you're on, are not super far away, but like you can barely see that far out. Yeah. So right. um me walking around this island in the pitch black was very therapeutic in the most macabre way. Um I loved it. It was great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it sounds like you made some friends, so that's good. <laughs> I did. Um, I made friends with um, two ladies uh, named Joe and Di, and they are planning on starting their own ghost hunting group. Um, they're from Northern Ohio, and yeah, they ended up. We exchanged numbers and like, yeah, if we're ever down that way again, like we'll meet up. And I'm like, heck yeah, that's like awesome. I will definitely do that. <laughs> that's awesome. Yes. So anyway, very very brave and i was like very sad that i missed all of the tiktok live stream because i would have loved to see some of it but anyway hopefully there will be like uh, yeah live stream like records everything right it does you should just put the whole thing up on youtube (laughs) well it's gonna it it was four hours long and i guarantee you if i like (laughs) if i go through all the footage there's gonna be about two and a half to three solid hours of me just shining a flashlight in darkness walking around the island. Yeah, but that's like the whole Halloween episode of Ghost Hunters, so. (laughs) (laughs) That's all they do live. (laughs) Honestly, the scariest thing for me was I was terrified that I was going to run into like some feral coyote that wanted to like rip my throat out, but I did not see a single coyote, thankfully. Yeah. I guess I can. I guess I could swim. So I was like, "Would there be coyotes on the island?" <laughs> as far as wildlife goes, um, there are deer, coyote, and then all like all the other kind of general small forest critters. Okay. Or, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's but yeah. Okay. <laughs> and horses. <laughs> and horses. I know. <sighs> what a dream. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, other than the Ouija board, and we know you use the spirit box, what other equipment did you try out? Yeah, I, I really didn't mess with the EMF reader. Um, because okay. I know how faulty those are. If you're just next to an outlet, <laughs> it'll set it off. Yeah. We did have a REM pod uh-huh. in the doorway. In that video clip that I uploaded to TikTok, there was a REM pod next to me, uh, but it was like on the ground. Okay. And then, of course, the spirit box. and then. Um, another couple they brought a like a laser grid thing so like that was cool (laughs) (laughs) yeah (laughs) but um yeah i didn't mess with the dowsing rods or pendulum just because yeah like i mean yeah the the rest of it really isn't any better (laughs) yeah It seems a little fancier, but really it's all. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry, people. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So I guess in terms of, so you said that you had sort of like the very, like you felt like the walnut trees were sort of unsettling, but we're sort of discounting that to like shadows and light play and stuff. Was there anything else that you felt beyond the spirit box stuff? which I'm like saving because I love it so much um, (laughs) that you felt like was like a notable experience. Like, did you hear anything, see anything else weird, get anything in pictures that was weird, stuff like that? So I took as many pictures as I could. Um, Even though my live stream lasted about four hours, I called it quits and I was like, eh, I've been live streaming enough. And so after that, I did another loop around the island and another little sweep of the mansion and you can't use flash in the mansion on mm-hmm. your cameras, as I mentioned earlier. So um, after it got dark, dark, obviously I couldn't get pictures in there, but I was using flash all over the trails and stuff, all over the other structures on the island. And I found nothing unusual in those pictures. I put on my headphones and I was listening to the audio of my live stream. I didn't capture any disembodied voices or unexplained noises, anything like mm-hmm. that. But I did have a very strange encounter um, that did scare the crap out of me that does not involve the spirit box. Um, Oh, okay. So there is a very long strip of just straight trail through the trees. It seems never ending, especially in the dark. Um, I guess at one point in time, it was like a little runway for planes. Oh, weird. Yeah. So 
um, along this path, it goes in behind the mansion, but along that path is like the maintenance shed, the horse stables, etc. So I'm passing or I'm getting ready to pass the horse stables. And in between the horse stables and the fence, I could see bright red eyes, <gasps> two oh, bright no. red eyes. And I am six foot one. And these things at a distance were at eye level with me. So whatever this was, was taller than me. It was Mothman. <laughs> now, listen, I live in Mothman territory, so that's a very real possibility. <laughs> so on my live stream, unfortunately, I kept trying to go back and like capture that moment. But you can't really see it in the live stream because it was too far away. But I was freaking out and yeah. I was like, I didn't know what to do. But I paid $100 for that ticket, so I was going to find out. So <laughs> I kept inching toward it. <laughs> Listen, and... I specifically told you before you left not to get murdered. So, <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I have student loan debt. Whatever happens, happens. <laughs> but <laughs> um, so my people in my live stream are being like, you idiot, don't go toward it. Like, what are you doing? Oh, my God. And then like I like my heart was pounding. <laughs> truly because i didn't know what the hell i was walking up to i'm like is this yeah. a not deer um <laughs> does this thing have a really long neck its neck was and so long <laughs> <laughs> it made it as tall as me but um as i got closer i realized that i was looking at the reflectors at the back of a trailer <laughs> i felt so dumb but that trailer was the second spookiest thing to happen to me that night. <laughs> ah, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> but you did it. You didn't just come back with a story of like, I saw weird eyes in the woods. Yeah, no, you I could have easily figured... twisted that. Oh, yeah, man. right. <laughs> you went and you figured it out. <laughs> okay, so that brings us to the spirit box, which... Yes. I am excited to just like hear you tell the story. We, so, okay. So Tyson got to do the Estes method, which Estes, Estes, whatever, um, which is where you use a spirit box. So normally all spirit box stuff, I'm just like, that is the dumbest piece of equipment. <laughs> like, it's just <laughs> random noise from a radio. Your brain wants to put things together into words, whatever. But the Estes method is the person who's listening to the spirit box puts um, a blindfold on and noise canceling headphones on. And so they can't hear or see the people around them while those people are asking questions or like giving prompts to the supposed spirits who are there. So the idea is like you're separated from the people and whatever you hear is like is actually real. It's not just like random noise that you're turning into words although arguably it could still just be random noise that you're turning into words and people make fusses about it yeah. <laughs> but tyson has this amazing video of him being the person doing the listening and like something weird happened and so i just want you to like describe the experience <laughs> <laughs> So um, when I decided that I was going to go into the mansion, it was um, right after sunset. And there was the couple that I mentioned earlier, and they were doing this. The guy was, well, by couple, I don't mean like a couple couple. I mean, a couple of people. I think it was a father daughter. But the father was giving prompts. On this island, that could mean a couple. <laughs> now, come on. They I'm were, sorry to those They people. were nice people. <laughs> I had to. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was the one chance i'm gonna get to west make... virginia has enough stereotypes megan <laughs> i didn't say it was because they were from west virginia i said it was because they were on the specific island <laughs> okay anyway okay. i'm sure they were perfectly nice people yeah. i'm not implying that anyone was in an incestuous relationship here. yeah full disclaimer and I didn't say that either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we're with the father-daughter. Yes. It was doing the... One of the tour guides, father-daughter, 
Father is giving prompts. Daughter has blindfolds on and she has her noise canceling headphones on. And she was given these like full phrases and sentences. And a lot of, yeah. And a lot of them were kind of lining up with what the father was um, asking. Uh And um, also the tour guide and one of the security guards as well. I forgot he was also in that room. And something that was really interesting to me was that they did have a rim pod. And whenever she would ask, or whenever the father would ask for them to, like, let us know that the spirit's with us still, if we had a moment of silence, then the REM pod would light up, which I thought was pretty cool. I'm sure there's some kind of explanation, but it was still (laughs) cool. Um, I didn't see anything kind of moving and disrupting the uh, laser grid, though. So nothing visually manifested. Um, so after they were done, I was like, Hey, uh, that's really cool. Uh, can I do that? And they were like, yeah, absolutely. So they, they left the blindfold, the, the headphones, uh, they passed on the spirit box cause they were, um, I think it was one of the spirit boxes that hidden Marietta had provided and, uh, but they did take the laser grid. So I didn't have that in the video. So the first time I did it, I did it twice. The video that you watched was my second round. Okay. The first time that I was doing it, I, I, I kept hearing just like kind of just fragments of words. Uh huh. Like nothing, no phrases, no sentences. Like the girl was um, relaying. Um, so I was like, eh, like maybe I just, I just need to like focus on this a little bit more. Like maybe because you do hear like little like spurts of like syllables of words so like just like short little like no yeah blah like stuff like that yeah well yeah so what it's doing is just i guess if people don't remember it's it's just rapidly scanning through radio frequencies and so every once in a while you get a little blip of something coming through (laughs) yeah so something that um like i just i kept hearing the name like ruth so, like, I would say Ruth and, like, the people that know the island and the history, like, they're like, eh, there's, I don't think, like, I don't know of any Ruth that lived on this island. Mm-hmm. So, like, again, it was, I was probably just hearing, like, a chunk of some random word on some random, random mm-hmm. radio station. Um, but um, I cannot explain it. But, um, and I'm sure it was just, like, being you know, cut off, like my senses cut off from the outside world and Mm -hmm. only listening to the static. But emotionally, something was happening to me. Yeah. And I, I don't recall this, but one of the tour guides said that like, she noticed a moment when my breathing started to change. And I honestly, I felt very emotional. Mm -hmm. And I actually had to um, tap out. And because I was actually on the verge of tears. Um, I can't explain it. Maybe there's some psychology person that can. Yeah. Like a weird, like sensory deprivation thing. Yeah. I just had some emotional response to that. Yeah. So I left, went back to my tent, chugged a Red Bull and I came right back. (laughs) I was like, no, we're doing this. You were ready to talk to those Like I'm getting my money's worth, damn it. (laughs) Yeah. So I went back and same thing. Uh, but it was just uh, me, security guard, and uh, one of the tour guides. Okay. And I'm like, we're going to do this again. The rim pod was still where it was. Um, again, lights are all out besides the lantern that was at my feet. Uh-huh. And as I'm listening, I kept hearing what sounded like no or snow or something to that effect. Uh-huh. And so I said snow. And that'll be important later. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, I have no idea what the people are asking me. Yeah. Um, I'm just repeating. and you really can't like it's good enough that you can't hear yeah. anything or like it's like turn on the AM radio station in your car, crank it up to 100. Like it's literally like that. Okay. Um. So there I am, not really thinking that I'm experiencing anything, uh-huh. and I'm saying words like snow. No, mom, leave, like just random one syllable words. And then the next thing I know, I feel 
several things crash at my feet. And of Ooh. course, having sensory deprivation and then that sudden feeling, yeah. I jumped like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and for those wondering, there is video evidence. Of there this. is video evidence of this. You can but, find it on my TikTok and Instagram. Yes. Yeah, so Wait, no, link- not my Instagram. My, t- my TikTok. <laughs> yeah, we will link to the specific TikTok in the show notes because it's like, I was so excited when I saw it. Because you can, like, I mean, I know the reaction was genuine, you know? Right. Yeah. So regardless of what happened, like, it was just you sitting there. How far away was, like, the nearest person to you? She was about eight feet away from me, like, not within grabbing distance. Okay. Yeah. Um. There's another video, Um. which I'll, I'll get to that in a second. But uh-huh. so I, I jolt out of this sensory deprivation and like the tour guide's laughing (laughs) and there are two other people in the room that i don't remember being there before it was people that had come into the mansion and just decided to like sit down at the far end of the room and just observe okay um so they were actually recording me as well and i was like what the heck and so that's when the tour guide informs me hey you know i had just asked the spirit if they're in the room with us to make a noise or move something to like make their presence known. And that happened. That question happened just seconds before things came crashing down at my feet. Oh gosh. And what was really um, interesting was that if you listen to her voice in that video, she has a very um, motherly voice. Like Mm -hmm. she has a very motherly tone. Like she's speaking to a child. Mm -hmm. The reason for that was because I had said the word snow. (laughs) <laughs> now, looping back to Margaret Blinner Hassett being a poet, mm-hmm. she referred to her daughter as her little snowdrop. <laughs> yeah. So when I said snow, they were like, oh, we're communicating with the little girl, <laughs> um, which I didn't know that they called her snowdrop until that moment. Mm-hmm. So that freaked me out just a little bit. And then yeah. also going back to the mansion being a story taller than it would have been. Um, this happened right outside of what would have been Little Snowdrop's nursery. Oh, man. Yeah. So it was just <laughs> all of the boxes were being checked. It was. Yeah. yeah. But the people that when I had come out of my my static coma, um, <laughs> the people recording at the far end of the room, she cropped a small segment of the video, uh, which is the same portion that i uploaded to tiktok just from a different angle and it's so unfortunately grainy and low quality like all ghost videos are and yeah and i hate that it is but um you can at least see in the video that i'm not moving but things did fall onto me um but yeah i that was my just like a rat ran past your feet or something and knocked stuff over (laughs) (laughs) well i mean like it was a heavy backpack um okay so and it could like I I genuinely believe it was just good timing. Yeah. Yeah. Like it just shifted and, and at the right time and right. you. Yeah. Because I mean like it was a backpack sitting upright. Uh-huh. So it was bound to, you know, succumb to gravity at one point or another. Um yeah. but as far as like me hearing snow, I was definitely hearing the word no, but with the static and yeah. this little thing called auditory pareidolia, um, I was sort of guessing at like things that sort of sounded like no. So like in my live stream, I am saying these words not confidently, but like uncertain. I'm like, yeah, right. Right. Like, yeah. So like, (laughs) I think it was just a lucky guess. Good timing. But regardless, it scared the crap out of me. (laughs) So, you know, the, the Bigfoot cut out. The red eyes in the woods that were a trailer. Uh-huh. Um, and then that. I had a great time. I loved it. And I would definitely mm-hmm. recommend it. Even if you don't believe in the paranormal, you know, you're still supporting you're still supporting local. And you're gonna have a good time regardless. And if you feel like the ghost hunting thing isn't for you, just camp out on the island and roast some hot dogs or something. I don't right. know. Right. Like worst case scenario, you get to like see this cool mansion and then spend a nice night camping on an island (laughs) right (laughs) side note i forgot to mention this but the bigfoot cutout was located next to what was called i think the the neil house 
it was a brick house, um, two uh-huh. stories tall. And um, I mean, it's mostly caved in just from flooding and oh. people not taking care of it over the years until, you know, the island started to be taken seriously as a historic landmark. Yeah. Um, but there's like a white line right below the window on the second story. That's how high the floodwaters got that year. So oh, like wow. when flooding happens, it happens. Like it's not yeah. just like, oh, we, you know, you're going to get your boots wet. Like, no, like things are washing away. Yeah. <laughs> um, but because I am an English major, um, on the little plaque out front of it, I thought it was really cool to find out that Walt Whitman stayed in that house at one point. So, oh, cool. Yeah, fun little history. There you go. Yeah, so like just historically, Island is also very cool. I feel like next time you have to try and meet the caretaker. Though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like very obsessed with the idea of this person. <laughs> no, like I hate yard work, but I would take that job. Yeah. <laughs> In a heartbeat. Yeah. 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 So I, I don't know. Overall, it just sounds like you had a really cool experience. I guess my interpretation would be like you don't really feel like you had any truly paranormal experiences. So I'm like right. ones that seemed awfully coincidental, but you know, <laughs> we're still searching for the, the key piece of evidence, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Well, I mean, so just from those three things that I had mentioned, like my three spooky moments, Uh I could have easily just become super afraid, ran out of there and had a great story to tell with no explanation. Right. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, that's not specific to this island or this investigation. Yeah. I think that's just something with the paranormal in general. Like when you're asking for a sign of something and then you hear like a crack in the floorboards maybe don't run away from it. Maybe stay there a minute and figure out what caused it. Right. Or like, just see like, maybe that floorboard just cracks. Right. Which is easier said than done because when your (laughs) adrenaline kicks in, it kicks in and your body. Yeah. I can like say that I would do this and be so excited, (laughs) but I would be crapping my pants the whole time. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I would have to bring somebody with me. (laughs) Um, Yeah. I guess that is sort of the last question that i had but did you feel like in the interactions that you had with the other groups that they were looking at things with a critical eye or doing debunking stuff like that i think i was the only person there at least openly i think i was the only person there that went in with a skeptical mindset okay but granted i didn't really speak to there were about 30 people on this oh wow more than i thought yeah um but like I said, they were all kind of in their own little groups. Yeah. Um, so I didn't really speak to much of anyone else besides the people that were actually working for the island and the tour company. Um, gotcha. Yeah. And some of them were like they some of them did have T-shirts on that were like blank, blank paranormal investigation group. And oh. yeah, so like they were going there like specifically like to find these spirits and, you know, So, yeah, as far as like what I witnessed and what the people I interacted with, a lot of people weren't going into it critically. It was more like, I want to say hopeful. I don't want to say, yeah, like they they were like genuinely hoping for a a paranormal encounter. Yeah. Which, to be fair, so were you. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, I was too. Um, Because like, I want to be proved wrong. I want this to be like undoubtedly proven true because that would be the coolest thing in the world. (laughs) <laughs> um, but I need good concrete evidence. Yeah, and, right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it was great. I liked it. And yeah. everyone was super nice. Yeah. Um, I guess uh, this might just be like you didn't talk to enough people, but like, did you hear any crazy stories like on the boat ride home or while you guys were packing up or anything? Like somebody like saw the ghost of Margaret or something like that? <laughs> no. Um, actually, I didn't hear of anyone capturing much of anything okay um which i i mean i could be wrong obviously but like as far as i know the like irony of the whole night is that the skeptical dude got the scariest clip yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's a great clip like everybody... like not to brag or anything yeah but... <laughs> <laughs> everybody go click on it and watch it because it is it is really good <laughs> <laughs> Okay, awesome. Well, do you have any other thoughts about this before we peace out? (laughs) 
Maybe remind people the name of the tour guy or t- tour group. Yes. So the company that um, organized this, they are called Hidden Marietta, M A R I E T T A. Yeah. Um, we, you can, I will link to it. <laughs> yes. Um, they have their own website, hiddenmarietta.com, where you can book your own ticket to this island. They are also on Instagram as Hidden Marietta, and they're also on TikTok as Hidden Marietta Torco. And then I am also on Instagram and TikTok, but my username is Tyson Unkempt. Yes. And that will also be linked. And I'm currently, as we speak, following Hidden Marietta on Instagram. (laughs) 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 So I'm going to keep this in the back of my mind. (laughs) Because if there's anything that I think I can sell Paige on for a road trip, it is going to this island. (laughs) (laughs) uh awesome well thank you very much this was awesome i appreciate you doing it last minute and stuff i just figured i was like let's just squeeze it in while it's fresh in your mind and everything (laughs) yeah for sure spooky science sisters is a proud member of the evergreen podcasts network for more information or to check out other shows please visit evergreenpodcasts.com